I'm somewhere in the mountains, and that's all you really need to know. ASL? Uh, ASL? Yeah. Age, sex, location. Everyone ignore Jared. No. <laughs> I, oh, that was. A I thought you were telling. I thought that was the stuff that's like it's like. Oh, that's uh, BDSM. No, ASMR. ASMR. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. But uh, it is a brand new year, and we're still here. And you know what uh, this means? The fact that it's the year two thousand and twenty-three. Uh, we're in our our official tenth year. We're. We're uh, well. We're going to be ten plus here really soon. Yeah, we we started this in the year twenty thirteen. Uh, I started this show after a, someone told me that radio was dead and uh, it was a waste of my time. It would be a waste of time. That's why we do not. Should we or should we not take the advice of the galactically stupid? I mean, technically, That's we're right. not a radio show. I would say now, to be fair, mm. to be fair, radio mm. might be, although there's the hardcore people. No, now, the uh, audio is a different story. I think, yeah. and I think what they meant when they said that was essentially audio streaming. Yeah, the, well, they they were saying that television is the future, and that that audio is. Oh, yes. television is not the future. It's yeah, already the past. The future. Yes, I don't know that. <laughs> no, man, I, I'm going to run out and sign up for cable tomorrow. Um, you know, it's funny. What? What's funny? Someone said to me, uh, I, I saw the thing. He, he said, wouldn't it be weird if someone, if a company were to take all of the streaming services, bundle them and sell them to you in one package like cable, <laughs> cable TV? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, if you want to watch whatever uh, the hell you want to watch, then that's pretty much what you got to do. Is you got to get like 17 different things. And also, uh, yeah. Netflix is cracking down on password sharing, so their stock's about to go in the toilet. Uh, is that really the thing? I thought that yep. was old. Nope. They, they, they've been, I, I thought that was like an old story. They've been uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. ramping it up, and Mitchell, now they're thank officially you. Uh, going okay. forward with Well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, play the music before we get. But welcome to Student of the Gun Radio. 10 years. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. This show is proudly brought to you from the SDS Imports Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Markle, and the shipping owner, Zach Markle. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. There you go. All right, man, we got so many things. If you guys are in the Discord, fantastic. Thank you very much to all of you patient Discord people. Uh, throw questions in there, and the boys will monitor those, and we'll decide whether or not uh, it's something that we need to talk about. Oh, man, I guess just jump right into uh, I've got so many things to say. Holy balls it's been two weeks uh since i've been in front of the black carbon steel microphone and the world just won't stop the world won't, just won't chill the that heck out for a little bit and uh so but we're going to talk about duracoat Ah, yes, indeed. You know, we talk a lot about colors. We talk about camouflage patterns. We talk about doing cool little, you know, artistic schemes. We've done the the uh, the ammo can challenge, and we did just a basic one where, like, show us your Duracoat project. We did the badass challenge. We did all those things. And people got super creative, and they did camo patterns, and they did Star Wars stuff, and they did all kinds of things. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, but I think the neophytes out there, uh, and there are still neophytes. I have to remind myself that there are still people out there that are that are new to this and are like, what is Duracoat and why would I want to do that and so on and so forth. At the very base level, it's durable, a durable coating. It's right, right? there in the name. It's a compound word. Durable coating. 
And at the end of the day, what you're trying to do, your, your primary goal is to take an object that's generally made of ferrous metal, right? Steel. And you're trying to protect that steel and keep it, you know, usable. Keep it from rusting. You're trying to fight against corrosion. That is, you know, and, and also in the South, you're trying to fight not only against corrosion, but you're trying to fight against things like oh, what's mold and mildew and, and, and all that garbage, right? You know, so how do we do that? Well, you mean you, you clean it, you, you strip all the oil and everything off of it, get down to the base coat, prep it, and then you put a finish, a durable finish on there. And that's at the end of the day, whether it's it's green or black, you know, slightly darker black, World War II olive drab green or pink or yellow or orange or whatever freaking color you want to put on it. The primary goal, and I think we, we sometimes the simple stuff or the basics get lost when we start, you know, we're like, well, I don't need a camouflage gun. And I had somebody comment the other day. They're like, you don't want to do that because it's going to. It's going to in inhibit the resale value. And they're like, it's gonna, it's gonna mess up the resale value of your gun. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I get that. I understand that because, and it is true because not everybody's gonna look at the tiger stripe pattern or whatever you did and think, man, that's really cool. Of course, if they don't, they're they don't look at your tiger stripe pattern on your Akamo DS 1775 and think. That is the most badass gun I've ever seen in my life. If they don't think that, then they're wrong. <laughs> but um, if you're looking at a gun and your first thought is, what is, you know, I better leave this thing alone. Don't change anything because I want to make sure the resale value is there. Then I, I can't wrap my brain around that really. Yeah. Like Nick has the right idea. He's like, why would you sell it? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you sell a gun? um to buy a to better, buy a better gun. gun fair uh, okay if you can't afford if you're both. just doing a trade up the, the gun shop doesn't give a shit. but uh anyway my point is this oh, and if F that's if that's a thing zach mark that time oh i said the s word sorry um if if you just want to preserve it put a solid color on it like the like dura blue Dura Blue will 100% protect your gun against rust. It looks great too, and it looks very nice. It looks very, it looks very nice. But at the end of the day, Dura Coat finishes, Dura Coat firearm finishes, whether it's Dura Blue or Dura Dyes or you know the colors, the various colors, the badass finishes. the The point is protect your investment, protect it against corrosion. And, you know, if you want to put fancy colors and color schemes and all that, that's cool too. But we don't, we want to make sure that the new listener, that the recent listener understands, because a lot of people, I, I, and I didn't realize this, of course, you know, because when you say something 10,000 times, you figure, well, I, I've said that 10,000 times, everybody gets it by now. Uh, but people show up and they're like, well, I don't understand why you'd want to do that. Or, or I don't need Durco because I don't want camouflage on my gun. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I understand, but it's not about camouflage. It's the main purpose of it is to protect your investment and to keep the rust and the corrosion off of it. So you guys got that? You're good? We're tracking five by five? All right. If we're tracking, then let's go ahead and move on and thank our buddies at SDS Imports. SDS Imports, the title sponsor of this show. SDS Imports has shotguns and handguns and uh, accessories and one of the things that we've been pimping and talking about is their 10 millimeter 1911 uh, that is an affordable 10 millimeter you know what just happened here uh. we we were pimping the 10 millimeter sds 1911 as one of the more affordable yeah not 10 millimeter handguns that you can get that just got kicked oh yeah so SDS Imports, check them out at, at the Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show. Uh, that's coming up in three weeks, only three weeks from now. Uh, holy crap. Three weeks from now, we'll be there, right? Yeah, in the show. At wow. the show. 
So this just exciting. Blah, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. So uh, if you are going to be there, if you're one of those people in our audience that are going to uh, that are going to be at the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show in Las Vegas, make sure you go by SDS Imports and say, "Hey, thanks for sponsoring Student of the Gun." All right, they threw us a curveball. This is I, I kind of like this about what they did. So the people at High Point. All the the whole world has been like, when do we get the the yeet cannon? When do we get the yeet cannon? We want the yeet cannon. Come on, when are we gonna get the yeet cannon? So everybody's been like focused on that, whether they want it or whether they hate it or whatever. But that's been the focus. And so while you guys are all, you're all thinking about that, they said, well, let's go ahead and work on something else. And they did it. Did uh. Dude, can we play this video that's where it says watch because I want to see it? Yeah. So uh, during the Christmas break, <laughs> this, see, this is why I said it was weird. So they uh, during the Christmas break, when everybody was basically not paying attention to anything, <laughs> they said, hey, let's go ahead and, and uh, announce the high point 10 millimeter what? handgun. No way. Yes, high point JXP 10 millimeter and uh, the guys at Vance Outdoors have already done a video on it and it, it's a... How long is the video? Uh, the video is about five minutes. Five minutes long. You probably won't play the whole thing. You want to play just like the first portion of it? or Yeah, it's just... Uh, this is a dude from Vance uh, Outdoors and uh, he's like, hey guys, check it out. So, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> wow. It's a big, hey guys, beefy son of a gun. Vance Outdoors, and I know we've talked about the high point 10 mil carbine before, but we're back on the 10 mil train. So 10 mil over the last few years has, again, it's gained a lot of popularity within the market. Um, there have been uh, some more ammunition manufacturers that are producing a target round that's a bit more affordable and they're producing it on a bit more regular basis. So, um, with that said, we have a new product launch from High Point, the JXP pistol. So, just like all of their other pistols, um, it's really, they, they try to produce a gun that is accurate, reliable, but comes in to the consumer at a very affordable price, and now they're offering it in even a Magnum caliber. So this is um, basically an enhanced version. So what we have in front of us, again, JXP, JXP 10 millimeter pistol, 5.2 inch threaded barrel. This has their new improved enhanced uh, black powder coated slide. Um, this comes with a replaceable Glock style front sight. It has a full uh, 1913 accessory rail That's on the frame. Awesome. That's amazing. It also um, is sporting their new pause, pause, enhanced. Pause, 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 pause. Can we get some accurate sights on these suckers? I was going to well, say if, if they're if Glock it's, style. If it's 17, if it's a Glock 17 front sight. Is that what he said? Because I, I heard he Glock, said Glock style. style. Well, he, he yeah, he, Glock style. Okay. So if so it's a Glock, then the answer so, is yes. What about the rear sight? Is it? Is it? Oh, can you continue to play? continue. Sorry. Yeah, I've got questions. <laughs> this dude probably has answers. Yeah, new enhanced grips. So enhanced texturing, enhanced design, grip panels. Um, all in all, um, the the new design from them brings the gun kind of into the current and current market compared to the gun that they've been guns that they have been producing for the past multiple years. Um, but to do it in a Magnum caliber was a little shocking when I got the phone call of what they were going to release. Um, 10 round magazine comes with one 10 round mag. The 10 round magazine works in the pistol and the carbine. So if you have the rifle and you get the pistol, mags work in both or vice versa. You're going to get the cool. pistol and have the rifle later. Mags work in, in yeah. both guns, which is, which is great, uh, um, a great design from their part that it doesn't take a proprietary magazine. Um, we've got some ammo here from various manufacturers, uh, different bullet weights. Uh, we're going to run into the range and uh, shoot the gun, um, <clears throat> see how it runs. Um, I actually uh, talked to the guys at High Point and I brought some super hot hand loads. So we're going to shoot that just to see how the gun handles all of it. Um, so stay tuned for some range time on the uh, new JXP pistol. All right, guys. So all right. So there you go. I wanted to see the rear sight. 
Uh, uh, he, he doesn't really show it off. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Uh, well, th- there's one shot right here where it's kind of not very clear. Let me move and it's, you move the Yeah, the it's not right. because look. Yeah. He can't see that, I don't think. Yeah. Zach, the top right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I, that's, I, I can tell because it, that those screws are for the are for the rear sight. Okay. So that's definitely not a uh, that's definitely not a Glock. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, to, so, so you got the it. Glock front sight, but the rear sight is still a. Oh, there oh that, that looks like it. No. Nope. It's not. It's their. It's also a it's three dot. Thing. Technically, yeah. Yeah, it's their their weird three dot. Oh, thing. I just realized I didn't so actually the, move the, the camera. The truth of the matter is, is it is it's actually okay because it you don't need. Yeah, you yeah. just you could replace you could put the front sight on there. And I, but I'm wondering if those are three dot sites on there because it looks. Oh, like they absolutely are. Oh, yeah, that's a three dot for sure. They always they they won't stop doing that. They won't listen to me and they won't stop. Yeah, because that's people what are so conditioned. That's that because three dot sites. Yeah, are the people thing. have been brainwashed. So uh, there you those go. Of you guys that are new to uh, guns and don't understand why three dot sites might not be the best op- option for you. You can go to studentthegun.com slash sites. There's a whole article written all about the science of sight and how three dots may not be the best option and indeed are not better than a two dot system. So in other words, they're, they're stupid. Yeah. Student of the slash sites. You can read all about it. So, all right. Uh, yeah. So now see what just happened over Christmas break is two of our friends, two of our sponsors have 10 millimeter handguns now. Yeah. And we Merry don't have Christmas either one of them. To, to... 10 mil manufacturers. Yeah, we, we don't have it. All right, do you it's, guys want to know? cyclical. Yeah, it is. Because do you guys is... want to know why the 10 mil's back? Yes, I want to know. Desperately. Okay, I'll tell you. It's really super easy um, because the 40's dead. You're like, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. The, 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 the 40 actually killed the 10. The 10 was super popular in the, in the early 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. So the late 80s, early 90s, the 10 millimeter was very popular because the Colt released the Delta Elite and convinced everyone psychologically that the U.S. Army Delta Forces was carrying them. They weren't, um, but people thought it. And if you had, if you wanted to be a the coolest gun guy in America, you had to have a 10 millimeter pistol, right? You had to have a, a Colt or somebody else. And so, Glock got on the bandwagon. And and bless Glock's heart, they never quit. You know, Smith and Wesson the whole time. quit. Uh, Colt quit. A lot of people, you know, went back and forth. They made them, then they stopped making them, making them, stopped making them. Da 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 da. Well, the uh, the FBI was going to adopt the ten millimeter. They did for a short amount of time. Then they realized that it was too the the gun was too big for their their people. They couldn't handle it. It was it was large. It was heavy. The recoil was hard. Um, their you know, soy fed manginas and 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 little girls uh, were crying. So any user. Um, long story short, uh, Smith and Wesson and Winchester get together. They come up with this new thing called the Forty Smith and Wesson, which is basically a ten millimeter short or ten millimeter light or whatever you want to call it. The bullets in the 10 millimeter and the bullets in the 40 are the exact same bullets. 0. 0.40 is is 10 mm. 10 mm is 0. 0.40. Same thing, right? So the the uh, the powers that be sold that American law enforcement doesn't know any better, so they bought them, and that the die was cast. You had to have a 40. Da, 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 da. And the people in the industry who said it was you know a bad idea, nobody listened to them. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're an old fogey. Who cares what you say? Well, fast forward to now, the 40 is dead because everything that the experts said turned out to be true. Um, the experts said the 40 doesn't give you any real advantage over a nine. The experts said it's a, it's a high pressure cartridge. It's going to break guns. Uh, the experts said it's more going to be more expensive to produce than nine. So it's going to be cost prohibitive. All those things came true. But what happened? Your Remington, your Smith and Wesson, your or your your Winchester, your Remington, your Federal, your you fill in the blank, the forty all of a sudden dies, like almost overnight. Over a period of about one year, people stop buying it. Cops stop buying it. Americans stop buying it. And you say, well, that's cool. We have in the back of the warehouse, Connex Box eight seventeen, 
has 10 million 40 caliber bullets. What the heck are we going to do with them? Melt them down, build a statue? And someone's like, ah, you know what nobody's been talking about for about 10 years? What's that? 10 millimeter. Like, we got the dies, right? They're like, yeah, we still got the dies. <laughs> We've got the dies. We've got the presses. We, we, we can make it. They're like, make it. So the people of your age don't remember the 1980s 10 millimeter boom. They don't remember that. They didn't live through it. That's ancient history. Everybody, you know, everybody believes that history started the day they were born. Uh, and if it didn't happen while they weren't paying attention, then it doesn't matter. So the industry is like, okay, let's do it. We know how to do these things because we were just doing it 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we were making 10 mil ammo. Uh, and so let's make it again. So that's what they're doing. And uh, the, the gun industry, like Jared said earlier, it's completely cyclical. Things come and go all the time. Uh, and now everyone's excited about the 10 mil again. Of course, you know, Glock sitting over there in the corner, waving their hand saying, you know, we never stopped. <laughs> oh, you, all you Johnny come lately we actually never stopped. But uh, so that is the, the 40 slash 10 millimeter story in a nutshell. All right. Juicy.com. It's still there. And uh, if you guys would like to go subscribe to Juxy.com, you can do that, studentofthegun.com slash Juxy, Juxy, and uh, J-U-X-X-I. I was looking at the videos on here, and when I went to the homepage of our channel, it's the George Mason and the Rights of Man, mm -hmm. Student of the Gun episode 1015 was the featured one, which means that that's one of the popular episodes, apparently, that's going around right now. Well, that's good. Uh, but then I, I swapped over to the videos tab and I saw the I am Santa Claus thing. I don't know if we played that for the public. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we did yeah. Okay. during the last show. Well, if you guys missed that, go to studentofthegun.com slash J-U-X-X-I, Juxi, and it'll take you directly to the where you need to go to watch that. I Somebody was and fiddling with their guitar. Session, yeah. Somebody was fiddling with their guitar. All right. Attention, new listeners. If you're a new listener or an old listener. You should still pay attention. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life. Get instant access by joining the student lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch student of the gun TV, read the blog and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Uh, yes, indeed. That is what you should do. That is what you should do. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, bump us over to the Brownells bullet points brought to you by Brownells. Bing, bang, boom. All right. Brownells bullet points is generally about stuff, is it not? It's about hardware. I'd say about it's things. about having things. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, spoken at length previously about their emergency and survival gear section. Uh, we've talked about pieces, parts, and components, and so forth. So uh, if you go over there, you should... Uh, well. Look at the emergency and survival gear as preparation. Now, I don't know how long we're going to keep saying be prepared before. What are you looking at, crazy? You know, it's looked different than mine? Yeah. Okay. I'm not really sure how long we get to say be prepared before we just have to stop and say, okay, the time for being prepared is over. Just that's it. I guess it never really is. It's never really over, over. Uh, I, I think it just goes through different levels. I think it goes through different levels. Uh, recently, if you guys did not see it, Zach, he uh, asked me to update an article I did about uh, community prepping and preparation 
and I did that, and he posted it. It's it's available. Zach, if you want to go ahead and drop the the link into the show notes, that That's would be cool. I, was, I dropped it in there. It's oh, the okay. One that you published in March. Yeah. Right, and then he just republished. Yeah. It's yeah. It's been updated. So it is. It's updated, uh, and one of the things that we just experienced is, and I, I mentioned this in the article, is that uh, the the people of the United States are being played for suckers. They're being played for chumps. The, the criminals in D.C. think that we're a bunch of idiots. They think that we're suckers. They just, after destroying, deliberately destroying our energy independence. We had energy independence four years ago. And, the, uh, and what liberals do, liberals, Democrats, communists, uh, they're all the same, is uh, they destroy what is good. And, and they try to substitute it for what they think is better. But uh, so by destroying our energy independence, they drove the price of fuel, both diesel and gasoline and propane. They drove those through the roof, right? We had an abnormal spike in fuel and energy prices. Well, right before Christmas, what happened? Oh, gasoline started coming down and people were getting excited. They're like, oh, my gosh. It's we're really the American people have been conditioned. They've been psychologically conditioned to to think and behave like a, like a domestic violence victim. When you look at three dollar gasoline and it makes you happy when two or three years ago, when the middle of Trump's term, it was in on the East Coast. It was less than two bucks. Alabama, Mississippi, Ohio, and so forth. It was buck eighty nine, buck ninety seven, you know, whatever. And then the the Sniffy Joe, the dementia riddled uh, meat puppet, got installed. Immediately, his handler started shoving things in front of him for him to sign, and he destroyed our energy independence. And fuel prices sh- shot through the roof. Quote: I don't even know what I'm signing right now. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm. I don't know what I'm saying right now. They gave me this pen and uh, so people are looking at three dollar gasoline like it's a good thing. You raise your hand. You're like, you realize two years ago it was a dollar less per gallon, and diesel fuel is still around five bucks a gallon when it was in the two and three dollar a gallon. You see, so while people are like, like, like it literally, it's, it's, it's like a domestic violence victim. They're like, aren't you glad you haven't been beaten in the last week? Like, you didn't get a beating last week, did you? You should be happy. Like, is that how I'm supposed to act? Like, diesel's still high. Um, diesel affects the price of every single thing you purchase in a store, not just food deodorant okay you buy a stick of deodorant freaking like deodorant now a stick of deodorant is like six bucks now 589 is it really yeah yeah you're like yeah in I case just, I, I buy in case every, you're, every consumable that i have i try to buy in bulk yeah i know so i buy it like once a year and then i just don't have to think about it till the next time yeah so everything's gone up and while you're supposedly going into Christmas, you're supposed to be all happy about the gas prices. That's most supposed to make you feel good about the world. While that's happening, have you gone to the have you purchased food lately? Have you purchased milk, eggs, canned a, food? A dozen eggs around here is almost seven dollars. So we it's just more don't than buy here. eggs anymore. Fifty cents an egg now. Yeah, it's it's fifty cents an egg. If for the for the generic ones, yeah, the if you want the really good organic ones, it was what nine bucks for twelve. Yeah, eight ninety nine for twelve eggs for the good organic ones. Uh, Nancy was making chili the other day. She said, "Go to the store and get a couple cans of the mushrooms." The, and I bought mushrooms. I have purchased mushrooms canned, like the little, the small can. There's the big can, the small can. I've done that many times because I'm a chili guy. What was 59 cents a can? $1.49. Crazy. 
the small can of mushrooms used but to the, be. But the report that the, I don't know if it's FDA, one of the governmental agencies releases, mm -hmm. they said that food has only gone up 15%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they what? said to, in 2023 to expect another 12 to 15%, or maybe it was 10%. So, so by their the board. Math, so I guess if you average it out across all the food, like eggs and milk and and stuff, canned like food, massive meat increase. Meat hasn't been too bad. At yes, least it has. Yes, year. it has. Uh, Ask has your it? mother. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, you don't know. Meat is is through the roof. Beef is through the move. To, the, and now they're they're playing a chicken thing on us. Now they're like, ah, oh, the the avian flu came in, and and now that's why eggs are expensive. No, eggs are expensive because of the cost of fuel. Eggs are expensive because what they did last year was they attacked American farmers with fertilizer prices and fuel prices. You know, and my point is this: preparation. You guys, this I believe that 20, 2023 is going to be the year that we say, see, I told you so. And uh, you, you've got to get on the stick. And part of that is is just, you know, if you if you go to the emergency and survival gear or whatever, um, you got to get on it. You got to get on it. So read the article. The, the, the article's up. Uh, it's it's in the uh, it's in the show notes if you haven't read it yet. Zachary, did you send a special email out or did you just make it live on the on the site? I think that email's going out tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, um, now is when I be quiet and let Zach do some talking. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe, all that plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed, and over at ShopSOTG.com, we're running a special deal right now because, as Dad said, things are going south and everyone needs to be prepared physically and mentally. And so for that reason, we've got, I've gone ahead and put the pipe hitters guides on shopsotg.com on sale, kind of. Uh, right now, when you order the uh, Crushing the Societal Breakdown book, you will also get the uh, Assistance of Regular Defense Corps book for, I think, well, for a discount. I'm not going to say percentages. Cause I don't <laughs> you what know that is. for a discount because you did it. Yes, absolutely. So right now, if you go to shopsotg.com, put both those books in your cart automatically, Boom, a big chunk of the price of the Citizens of Regular Defense Corps will be taken off at checkout. No code or nothing. It just goes by itself. And yes. this is Yep. And this so, is a limited time offer. Go ahead, Jared. Oh, I would when you're done with that, I just want to go back to the food thing yeah. for a second. No, just limited time offer, so get it on it now. Shop SOTG.com, get both the pipe hitters books today. No, Jared. Sweet. Yeah, I just I found the summary findings that I was uh, referring to from the USDA it's from the USDA ers.usda.gov and it's uh food price outlook 2022 and 2023 i think this was published in early 2022 and because it says at the top here the food price outlook is being revised based upon methodology documented in the following report the revised data series is forthcoming in january of 2023 mm -hmm. so we should look out for that here pretty soon um i'll just read the 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 meat of the thing here in 2022, food price increases are expected to be above the increases in 2020 and 2021. In 2022, all food prices are predicted to increase between 9.5 and 10.5%. Food at home prices are predicted to increase between 11 and 12%. And food away from home prices are predicted to increase between 7 and 8%. Well, we have lived out 2022 now. We know that that's false numbers the prediction was not accurate um, in 2023 all food prices are predicted to increase between three and a half and four and a half percent food at home food at home prices are predicted to increase between three and four percent and food away from home prices are predicted to increase between four and five percent so if these numbers are to be believed and like i said there's another report coming out soon but if these are to be believed then theoretically 2022 was the highest uh, percentage increase 
even though their numbers here are a lot lower than they actually were. Right. So yeah, we'll because see. as we live out 2023, we'll see how good that their prediction uh, machine is. Yeah. Remember when uh, bad for the regime. Yeah. When they, when, when they told us that inflation was only uh, like, what did they say? 8% or 7% or something like that. And uh, the few cost of fuel had gone up 75%. Yeah. Oh, this like, actually, it was published later or this was an update or something because it says poultry prices decreased 0.8% in November of 2022 no, they didn't. following a 1.1% decrease in October yet remain 13.1% higher than in November of 2021. If you want a real, if you want a real a- accurate statement or your re- real acumen, accurate uh, summary, don't ask the USDA, ask your wife. Ask my wife, because my wife knows the, the what's gone up. My wife knows what is more expensive, and uh, the uh, not only have the egg prices gone up, but they're also putting where in our stores they're putting limits. Yep, yep. I took on a picture how many of that you can buy. Day. I'm gonna. I took a picture. I'm gonna put it in the on the screen in a second. Same here. thing for you where you're living. Uh, I, I posted that picture, and people jumped in they're like actually where i am the, there aren't any i went to the store and the egg thing was empty um so see we haven't had that issue around here or in salt lake yet but the prices are definitely skyrocketing all right so let's go ahead and move on to the student of the gun homeroom brought to you by our good friends at crossbreedholsters.com Oh, our crossbreed. Are you guys listening? Are you paying attention? My question, you know, the chest rigs, the bear medicine, Eat. Um, the, the, the chest rigs, uh, for crop that crossbreed makes, they make a really nice chest holster. We did a whole bunch of videos demonstrating how to properly draw from a chest rig, how to go back to a chest rig and so on and so forth. Cause it's a different animal. It's a different animal than your normal you know, belt holster. And a lot of people, the, the main people that purchase these are not urbanites, right? It's people who are out in the country, you know, and so on and so forth, uh, where you're going to have a big open carry gun, backpackers, hikers, you know, hunters, campers, ATV, whatever, you name it. And what is one of the, one of the biggest reasons, Jared and Zach, I mean, you know, that people are getting these chest rigs is because wild animals, particularly bears. And the, I believe the two most popular ones, check me if I'm wrong, boys, um, you guys, 619 for uh, 12. Uh, I was looking at the limit. Oh, okay, limit four per customer. So um, check me if I'm wrong, but I believe the two most popular ones for the chest rigs are for the 10 millimeter or the large frame Glocks, because that's bear medicine, and for the big 44 Magnum, for the 44 Magnum revolvers, because that's bear medicine. My question is, will, will they pull the freaking trigger on a JXP chest rig? I don't know. We'll see. Well, you know that. Uh, guns don't really stop bears. You should probably use bears. Oh, yeah, that's right. You should use, you're better off using a gun, will just ang. If you shoot the bear, it'll just anger it. You should use bear spray instead. Uh, we've multiple times we've talked on the show about uh, instances where bear spray was used and failed, but also instances where a gun was used and succeeded, including one instance where a 22 caliber was used and succeeded. Yeah. Now I wouldn't I wouldn't go carrying a Ruger Mark II or yep. Mark III as a bear gun, you know, but uh, but it worked. It's better to have a gun than not to have a gun, except when you're talking to Mister Pogue. Uh, how many Pogue? We didn't get any new Pogue stories, did we? Did we exhaust all the Pogue stories last time? Yeah, with the with the mountain lions and the uh, there was two mountain lion attacks, weren't there? Yep. Yeah. Jeez. All right, but. All right, we'll leave Mr. Pogue alone. Uh, I don't know if he's recovered yet uh, from being a a galactically stupid mongoloid. 
But when it comes to crossbreed holsters, when it comes to being dangerous on demand, we have extolled, we have been extolling the fundamental four for how long now? Would you say several years? Would several years be correct? It's It's got to be since the original glass case of emotion, right? Yeah. So numerous years. Uh, and I just saw over during the break, someone's like, what is real EDC? Because that is the hot hashtag on Instagram now. Maybe it's real. Yeah, real. What, it's, what it's is real like team. What uh, they, EDC? Real quick. Soccer? Yeah. Real yeah quick. What do they uh, carry? The official article that we put out was June 27th, 2019. Four items every arm station should carry, the fundamental four. I don't know how you long. dropped that in the notes. Yeah. I don't know no, how long yeah, we promoting we, it, but that's when we put out the official article. Okay, because I, I, I can't believe that it's only been three years or four years. Seems like we've been doing it a long time. I mean, we've been talking about this stuff for a long time, but I think we officially started calling it the fundamental four and a couple years ago or i don't know time flies 19 maybe. really june tw july 27th 19 uh, 2019 1992 mm. that's what? the first time that I'm, i okay whatever that might be when we well, coined the term mm. so it, it 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 strikes me as weird that we're having this that people are actually having this debate about what should i carry you know um you know the, we've got people that I get the. I saw it. It was in articles. The guy's like, "Oh, you know, how many extra magazines do you need?" Ninety-seven. Yeah, and he's like, "Well, let's talk about extra magazines. How many you need? Blah blah blah." And there was no medical gear in there at all. Like, we're 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 focusing on the wrong stuff, people. We need to put our mental energy into into realistic and positive places. You know, if and uh, you know, James said he goes, he's like, look. You're going to run out of time before you run out of ammo in a, in a basic self-defense situation. Um, and people are like, well, what are you trying to say? Um, what are you trying to say? I shouldn't carry this or not? No, he's like, he goes, if, if your focus is how many extra magazines should I have and you have no medical gear on you, your focus is wrong. If your focus is... How, how many knives should I have on me, but you don't have a flashlight on you? Your focus is wrong. Okay, we, we got to get it. At some point in time, you have to step back from the lunacy and say, all right, what is fundamental? What's the basic? So the fundamentals, the basics, the foundation, lethal, sharp, bright, medical. Now, that's the basics. That's the minimum. I never said don't carry anything else. I've had people say, well, what about a pen? You should always have a pen on you. I'm like, okay, yeah, have a pen. What about your watch? Yeah, have a watch. I, I didn't say don't do that. But there are certain things that you should not walk out of your front door unless they're attached to you. If, if I had to like run out to the store or go somewhere real quick and I didn't have a pen on me, I wouldn't turn around and drive back home, say, oh, man, I, I can't go to the gym. I don't have a pen on me. But if I neglect, if I walked out of the house without a med kit, without a light, without a, a knife, without a gun, I would go back and get it. That's what, you know, what, what would or should you turn around and go back and get? You know, if, if you forgot your watch, okay, or phone. The, I, you know, the other day, I left without my phone. And I realized it was on the charger in the bedroom and I was five, six miles away from the house. And I realized I didn't have it. And then I, I but I, I comforted myself. I had that psychological, you know, that, that tinge you get psychologically. And I said, and so I did the real quick mental checklist. I'm like, okay, but I have all the other stuff, right? I've got the fundamental four on my body. Yes. And there was a time when I was able to leave the house drive around and come home without a telephone attached to my body. Nuh uh there that, that I actually successfully I successfully lived on planet Earth without a telephone in my pocket. All right, the episode where we released the term fundamental 4 
on the radio was November 14th, 2018. Ah, so that might, that could be true. That's a, a little, almost, that's almost five, five years. years. Um, so, well, going on five years. Yeah. So, and you know, what did I say? SOTG 802. The title was the importance of the fundamental four and war stories with Jeff Kirkham. There you so go. If you haven't listened to that. Go listen to it. 802. Wow, there was a time when we only had three digits in our episode numbers. So, uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of confusion out there about, you know, what should I have, blah, 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 blah. Like, at some point in time, you need to go back to the basics. Go back to the basics and remember the fundamental four. Lethal, sharp, bright, medical. Things that you're probably going to need. You know, and things that, that if you don't have, you can't really, you know, if you're like, I have a flashlight on my phone, stop. You know, uh, stop. If that is your, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's like, I have matches in my pocket. That's like people saying, well, I don't need a, hi, baby. A baby just woke up from her nap. You know, people are like, well, I can, I'll use my Zippo. I'll use my Bic lighter as a light. Like, okay. What are you, in a yeah, horror she, movie? Yeah, I know. It's like, exactly, exactly. Speaking of which, it actually occurred to me. Let me take a sip. I'm about to cough. It occurred to him something that he saw in a horror movie the other day, and he's going to take a quick sip of his drink and then tell us about the horror movie that he watched because Dad loves horror movies, as everyone knows. Uh, I think I killed enough time. No, I don't like horror movies, but it occurred to me that almost every jason friday the 13th you know yeah fig, whatever fill in the blank unless it's a psychological one like a freddy where you know freddy you can't shoot freddy because he's in your dreams yeah but most of this like slasher things if the people in the movie were in possession of the fundamental four those movies would be over in 15 minutes. They, they'd have a lot better chance, but like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers, probably not. Scream, though. Yeah, it'd be a boring movie then. Yeah. Scream, you'd be good. It's like, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, zing, zing, pow. <laughs> Roll credits. Oh, yeah, that would have been a lot easier. Zing, 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 zing. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> if people would just have the fundamental four, man, you know? I have an idea. What? We should recreate all of those movies. Movie funny themes, no, just the movie theme. Like it and you'll be the initial opening scene and then you draw your gun and pow pow. It's like, all right, roll credits. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. So uh that is our crossbreed holsters. Um student of the gun homeroom for you. And of course use the the promo code SOTG when you check out at crossbreedholsters.com. <sighs> I just deliberately took a deep breath because what follows, how far into this are we, Zach? Uh, debatably about 50 minutes. Okay. We can go 90 because we need to, this is, this is important information. I'm going to give you guys a real quick background. In, I became a United States Marine in 1987. In 19... 79 or 80. I can't remember which. Uh, I was either in seventh or eighth grade because I remember we were in the junior high, the gym at my junior high, and they brought out they, that we were going to do CPR. And they brought out the Recessa Annie versus dummies. And back in the old days, you guys don't know this. Back in the old days, the CPR dummies had arms and legs, and they had a blue and red tracksuit, and it was Annie, right? And Annie, she uh, so it she, would have been like Jeffrey Dahmer's girlfriend. Yeah. So she had, um, she well, she had a drinking problem because she always smelled like alcohol. Uh, now the recessa Annies we worked on, the, what they had what, between people, they would just take an alcohol wipe and wipe off her mouth and nose. So we learned back in the day, we learned. One man, and it because this was over a period of a few days. Because I remember, like, we went to the gym and we did it, and we, you know, spent an hour or whatever in there. And uh, then 
we came back the next day and, and so on and so forth. We learned one man CPR. We learned two man CPR. We didn't learn Heimlich. Heimlich really wasn't a thing in the like, maybe it was, but I don't remember learning it. Um, but we did learn CPR. We learned the, the counts. We had to memorize the counts. We had to do the and one and change and one and two and three and change. And we would change. First of all, they don't do any of that anymore. They don't do two, they don't even teach two man CPR anymore because they realize that even though they spent all that time doing it, that it never actually happened in the real world. Um, the only people that ever did it were um, perf- like EMTs and nurses and stuff, but the average person never did two man CPR. So they're like, well, what? Let's just teach one, right? My point is this that was about 79, 1979 or 1980, that time frame that I learned CPR. Now, when I was in the Young Marine Youth Program, we learned basic first aid. I learned basic first aid. I learned, you know, how to the, make a sling out of a, out of a cravat or a rag or whatever. And, you know, how to treat basic burns and how to, you know, um, all, all that basic it, essentially, the young Marines borrowed the Boy Scout manual for if you guys had the old Boy Scout manuals with the pencil drawings, you know, here's a broken leg. Here's how to make a splint. Here's, you know, all this stuff. Well, fast forward to 1987. I go to Paris Island. I become a United States Marine, right? I do that. And we go through military approved first aid training. Other than the fact that we were all wearing, you know, the green pickle suits and stuff. Uh, most of it was pretty much Red Cross Boy Scout stuff. You know, we, we did do the, you know, we did do the, uh, the buddy carry, how to get your buddy off the battlefield, you know, how to fireman's carry, how to, how to drag, how to, you know, all that stuff. There was obviously some military specific stuff, but as far as dealing with wounds, my entire formative years, you know, the, very little had changed. In, in the late 90s, the mid to late 90s, I became a Red Cross family first aid and CPR Heimlich instructor. Went to the program, got my certificate so I could teach people how to do the Red Cross approved program, right? And very still, from 79 to 97, 98, very little had changed. And one of the things that was common was when it in regards to tourniquets they would talk about it because they felt like they had to right they they would talk about it but they would say as a last resort after all other means have failed whether it was the boy scouts whether it was young marines whether it was red cross whether it was the marine corps whether you know uh whoever Everybody was singing the same song for years. Last resort, all other means have failed. Last resort, all other means have failed, right? Well, we get into, and of course, this is going on during essentially a Cold War. We get into an active shooting war, Afghanistan, Iraq. And what happens? Well, we sent our troops over with helmets and body armor. So we did a really good job protecting their core, really good job protecting their heads. But what's sticking out? Arms and legs, right? Because, you know, we, we cannot put, people can't function fully armored. You can't armor their legs and, you know, you can't put 10 people out there in bomb suits because it, they wouldn't be able to, to function. So what's happening? Well, first couple of years of GWAT, we're losing a lot of so- soldiers, soldiers, Marines, troops, whatever, are dying from what the, uh, the Army's uh, Surgeon General is calling um, survivable lethal wounds or lethal survivable or whatever. Meaning, if that person would have gotten good treatment, even though it was a a critical or a life-threatening wound, they would have survived. And what happened? We had major bleeds, arterial bleeds in the arms, arterial bleeds in the legs, 
So what are our troops doing? Well, they're doing what they were trained to do. They're trying everything else, right? And then when they realize that everything they're trying is failing, then they're trying to make improvised tourniquets with rags and sticks and whatever, and it's failing. The, the, the army did the study. The improvised tourniquets almost never worked. The, the, the failure rate on the improvised tourniquets was astronomical. And the reason is, is because, well, think about it. How often did people practice making improvised tourniquets and putting them on? Very rarely, if ever. Never. Why would you? The book says, last resort, all other means have failed. So we never practiced it. We did it one time in the class. They're like, okay, here's a rag, here's a stick. Pretend to do it. Okay, you pretended to do it. All right, now you're done. That's it. And then three years later, someone's laying on the side of the road, blood squirting out of their leg, and you're supposed to just magically make it work. Doesn't work. Well, to their credit, the uh, the U.S. Army's uh, I, I think it's like the Surgeon General's office or, or the you know they they said hey we we got to do better. We've got to do better. We number one, we need better training. Number two, we need better gear. And at the time, the only actual commercially made tourniquets were medic were, were surgical tourniquets, were ones that were used in, in hospitals. The field tourniquet or the trauma tourniquet or the you know the, the cats, the rats, the soft tea, the all, that didn't that stuff didn't exist. Go ahead and write it down. It didn't exist. So we had to like in a crisis, in a crisis, we had to come up with new tourniquets and new treat, new uh, training. Now, the, the TCCC program, the Tactical Combat Casualty Care, actually was in its, it was kind of in its inception stage. And the U.S. Army Special Forces was, they were messing around with it in the 90s, but it wasn't standard training for every troop. The TCCC program initially was something that the special forces was was they're messing with, they're thinking about, they're like, what if we did this? You know, da, 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 da. Well, that obviously all changed about 2005, 2006, because it was in the first couple of years of GWAT, it was, it, we learned some hard, painful lessons. A lot of people died that didn't need to die because our training and our gear wasn't up to date. It wasn't where it needed to be. And that's when I come in. So I went to work as a small arms and tactics instructor on a contract for the U.S. military as a military contractor. And I went through, before we started teaching, everybody in the, the cadre went through a training instructor development program. And part of that was going through the TCCC program. We went through the TCCC program. And I was very fortunate to have a couple of uh, combat veteran medical people, an 18 Delta and an Air Force pararescue guy who actually had real world in the field saves, who'd saved multiple dozens, hundreds, I don't know how many people they saved uh, and treated in the field. And one of the things that we introduced was tourniquet now. As soon as, it, it, you know, this whole idea of, all other means have failed. Try this, try that, try the other thing. And after you screwed around for five minutes trying to stop this guy's leg or arm from bleeding, well, then put a tourniquet on. That essentially equals death. The other thing that I learned was, uh, and his name was Ryan. His first name was Ryan. He was 18 Delta. And he was really salty and he had some strong opinions because all 18 deltas pretty much feel in their heart that they are emergency room physicians <laughs> they all feel like um and and if well you know if, the room is where the emergency is right? <laughs> and all right what and what what do you never say around an 18 delta okay can you look at this yeah yeah you're, you're, you, if, if you ever tell them, like, hey, man, I got a this or that, and they're like, take your shirt off. 
Wherever you are. Yeah. Like, take take off your off, shirt. Bend let, over. Take off your shirt. Let me see. Now, come on. Just, just take off your shirt. Let me see what's up. Okay. Next thing you know, they're right. cauterizing the wound that you didn't know you had. <laughs> like, what is this? There's, there's stuff in gauze in places and stuff. And they're, they're, they're stapling you or stitching you or whatever. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we learned from Ryan, uh, Ryan said, he goes, he, he looked at us all. He goes, we don't. And he said, all right, we've gone through this whole program and we never talked about CPR. He said, you know why? Because we don't do CPR on the battlefield. He said, he said, you guys understand why? And we were all like, yeah. You know, by that time, we're like, yeah, because um, CPR does what? What does CPR, what does it stand for? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The whole reason you're, 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 you're beating their heart for them, right? So, first of all, the only people you do CPR on are people that are having a cardiac emergency where, whose heart is not currently beating for itself. That's why you're doing it. If their heart's already beating, you don't need to do that. You guys understand that, right? If their heart is beating, you jumping on their chest, pushing up and down, is you're not helping the situation. You're trying to move oxygenated blood throughout their body. Yes, you're you're trying you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to make the blood keep moving around the body so that the organs in the brain don't die. That's what you're doing. But if someone is bleeding to death, because they have holes in them, and you jump on their chest and do CPR, what you're doing is you're making them bleed to death faster. You have effectively changed the tune of CPR from staying alive to die, MF or die. Yeah, to die. So we got a story here. Go to the New York Post story. This this keeps happening and it's got to stop. I don't know how it's going to stop, but it's, we've, we've got to make this stop. So this is a crazy story. The story is from the New York post, but the, but the incident actually happened in the UK, in the United Kingdom, where they never met a gun control law that they didn't love, where the people are effectively disarmed. And yet, this happened. Oh, she's really pretty. Yeah. That's she was. Oh, the, the uh, title is Angel Beautician L. Edwards killed in Christmas Eve shooting at UK pub. All right. First of all, how does that happen? I thought the Brits were always telling us how we're barbarians for having guns and they're civilized and they don't have guns. Therefore, no one ever gets shot in England. Mm hmm. A 26-year-old beauty shop worker was fatally shot in the head while partying at a packed English pub on Christmas Eve. They're allowing them to party together now? Elle Edwards had been with her sister and friends when gunfire broke out shortly before midnight Saturday at the Lighthouse Inn in Wallasey Valley. Or I'm sorry, Wallasey Village in Merseyside. The barrage of gunfire killed Edwards and critically injured a 28-year-old man who was taken to the hospital. A 22-year-old pub patron was wounded in the legs, plural. A 24-year-old man suffered a hand injury. And a 33-year-old man hurt his wrist. A female patron performed CPR on Edwards until she effectively made her blood bleed out of her body and killed her until first responders arrives. Arrived. Yeah. So that, the story just said a female patron performed CPR on Edwards until first responders arrived. Edwards was rushed to Arrow Park Hospital, where she was pronounced dead a short time later. Edwards worked as a beautician at a salon called Nova Studio in Whirl, where her co-workers mourned her violent death. So I wonder if this is, do, do they have the ability to say, it's kind of hard, right? To say, oh, you effectively push so much blood out of her body that you put her into irreversible shock. Yeah. See, versus, that's the thing is, is we've talked about this before. Uh, we had a, it was a couple of years ago or whatever, a detective was negligently shot inside of a police station. And the report said that officers performed CPR on him until the EMTs arrived and he died. Like, no kidding. Uh, 
and then this isn't the first one. We've had multiple situations where a person was shot and the response was CPR. Now, I, I do want to throw this out there because I think other people might be thinking it as well. If she was shot in the head, it might have been a little too late anyway. The CPR might not have actually done much. There's been people that have shot. Oh, people get shot in the head, head and live all and the time. Live. Yeah. Now, unless she was already like DOA from like brainstem. Um, That's why it's, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, even if it was so remove the headshot from the equation, somebody was shot in the body. It's still kind of difficult for a phys physician, an ER doc to say, you pump so much blood out versus it was already going to leak out anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless you stop it. Yeah. Right? Instead of doing CPR, you should be doing things that are going to stop the bleeding from stop the happening. blood from right, yeah. we need the whole reason we put a tourniquet on first is because we need to keep all the red stuff inside of you uh that's what's most important like russell brandt's song no inside of you no i don't know that you don't know that no nope, forgetting sarah marshall mm, nah, man I, I saw that one time when it first oh, came out man well somebody will enjoy that I guess. there you go so this is not the first time that someone's response to a gunshot victim was to do CPR on them. So the reason I bring this up is because I just wrote a freaking book. I, I wrote the book actually long before um, I was working on it. I've been working on it since August, and it's finally out. Uh, it's called Beyond the Boo Boo. And uh, it's called Beyond the Boo Boo Traumatic Medical Training for Citizens. The reason we did this was because there's so much bad, outdated information out there that I felt the need. And in the book, I detail what I just told you guys on the radio, that and more. When I started, when I initially started trying to teach citizens because, you know, in 2007, 2008, my thought process is if, if we can teach 18 and 19 year old kids to effectively save their buddies' lives on the battlefield by, with TCCC, why can't we teach American citizens, the average human, to do the same thing? It's not like an 18 year old in a camouflage uniform is somehow a genius and has a level of ability and skill beyond that of mere mortals, uh, that's not the case. If you can teach 18 and 19 year olds how to save people's lives while they're waiting for the, you know, the doctors and the ambulance to show up, why can't you teach men, women, teenagers, children? Why can't you do that? Well, the answer, obviously, here, 15 years later, the obvious answer is, well, yeah, obviously, duh, you can. But in 2004, 5, 6, 7, when you brought that up, you were a heretic. I tried for years to write an article extolling the value of traumatic medical training in carrying gear, and I couldn't sell it. Editors wouldn't buy it. They wouldn't publish it. They're like, you can't do that. So he took to the streets. I took to the streets. No, but, um, and I detail that in the book. I'm like, Guy Sagi was the first one to take a chance. Everyone else was a coward. Yes. Well, why? Because he knew the difference between black napkins and white napkins. That's right. So uh, before this book could be published, this story happens, right? This woman, another, uh, did CPR. You know, like, what is what is going and and see that's the problem with cpr is people have been programmed to believe that is the that's what you do like someone's injured you do cpr like whoa 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 do you even know why we're doing it bleeding people don't need cpr okay bleeding people need to keep, have you to do something to keep the blood inside their body that's what they need We've got to, I mean, I'm trying to beat this drum for 15 years. I tried to get people to shut the F up and just put on a tourniquet. 
quit fighting me on this. And it wasn't just me. And <sighs> well, it's making a difference because there's more people that are carrying EDC med kits uh, today than there ever has been in the history of and, the world. In 2000, ask Jeff Kirkham, Jeff, Jeff Kirkham, the inventor of the rats, 2007, 2008, there were two people in the firearms media that were trying to get people to just shut the F up and get the training and carry the gear. And our uh, late friend, James Yeager, and uh, a guy named Paul Markle. It, uh, James, he left me with this task. <laughs> He's like, you got it. Carry on. So I did, I, I did the book. It's out there. It's available. There's going to be pimp hand approved copies. Zach's going to do a thing. Um, somebody's screwing with the fire upstairs. Me members sister. of the grad program are going to get a special pre-order. So keep your eyes out yeah. for that. So I, for 15 years, I've been trying. I mean, we did. We, we've you know, we've we've talked about the pocket lifesaver, how that came about, the Boston bombing, my personal experience, you know, all of that stuff, all that stuff we talked about, and then one of you guys sends me this video. Um, you got the YouTube video, Zach, six days ago or, or a few days ago. Yes. I queued it up. So there's, I'll set it up for you and then I'll shut up. So there's these two people that I was not aware of. They're called arm. They call themselves armed attorneys. Somebody mentioned that in here, the comments of the discord. Yeah. They call themselves armed attorneys and they're supposedly pro two a right. So just to, they did a YouTube video podcast here recently and i don't think we need to give them any airtime on our show well i i want can we just summarize no i want people to hear this because people won't believe it people will say people will say that there's no way that in the year 2023 that intelligent adults would say this yeah but using the instructor like the how instructors work would not confuse the audience they mull it around later they're like okay are we supposed to do this or are we not supposed to do this well, you can't fix a problem if you don't address the problem. So, you know, play this. Play, play it from, this is a man and a woman who call themselves armed attorneys. They have a YouTube channel and a podcast or whatever. And this is their take on trauma kits. Defense preparedness. Right. And that's where, I mean, when we look more towards self-defense, mm -hmm. that's where I think trauma kits are not a good idea yeah they they definitely might not be people because, would be mad at me for saying that but i i honestly believe that if i have a client who gives in a self-defense shooting i do not want them to have a trauma kit on their person yeah i think a good way to start would be like creating that baseline you don't have a trauma kit yeah um let's say i mean and the big downside of that is maybe you're less prepared for emergencies sure. maybe you don't have the capacity to mitigate you know, somebody losing their life or... Uh, Maybe that person's very close to you. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, there's definitely some downsides, but I think to your point of if you do have a trauma kit, I think the list of cons is kind of long. It's long. So, I mean, let's talk about it. So... You, you want to keep going? You you want to hear what this, this, this bubble-headed bleach blonde has to say about why you should not have a trauma kit on you? Or do you want to just leave it right no. there? So this is where I am. She's looking at it from an attorney's perspective the, of, of defending people. So she's she, probably got some, uh, and they address the big downside. They address the big downside of not being prepared enough to save the life of somebody that you love. If you're willing to be there while somebody that you love is dying, just to be better off in a legal situation, you are, I would question the morals. You are a horrible, monstrous person. It's like they, they, I, they, I, I'm not going to listen to what she has to say about the, the specific reasons. The cons. I'll, I'll probably listen to it later. I'll listen to it later. But I, I just don't care. 
I would rather save the life of my loved ones and end up in prison. You, you're not going to. That's, see, that's the lie. But, but if it did happen, I would rather go to prison knowing that I saved my wife or my kids. There's, there's four. James Yeager is. He wrote a book before he. He wrote before he died. He goes, he goes. If you are ever forced into a crisis, it is thrust upon you. You left the house that day, weren't planning to do anything, and the crisis is in front of you. Whether it is a burning building, whether it is a rollover car crash, whether it is an armed confrontation with a. A, a robber, murderer, rapist, whatever. If you're forced, if you're put in there, there's four outcomes, four potential outcomes, and that's it. You are either going to be a live hero, a dead hero, live a victim. live coward, nah. or a dead coward. Yep. Those are your choices. He said, so you, the situation is right in front of you you have you didn't plan it that's the way the world is you know you, you don't get to plan for these things you're not going to get a postcard and you're at the at when it's all over with you're going to be one of four things you're either going to be a live hero a dead hero a living coward or a dead coward the choice is up to you that you know all the other bull crap aside all the other hashtag edc instagram whatever all the crap aside at the end of the day after that crisis is over people are going to think of you in one of four ways you get to decide that's the only thing you get to decide you don't get to decide whether the crisis happens you don't get to decide whether the crisis materializes you get to decide how you react to that crisis and you're either going to be a you're either going to be a hero living or dead or you're going to be a despicable coward living or dead and i don't think we use that enough i don't think we use the term cowardice enough these people uh, on this video are cowards they're living cowards they're currently living breathing cowards and they want you to be a living breathing coward as well i don't give two fat rats rear ends if they claim to be pro 2a they don't get it they don't understand and they want you to be a living or a dead coward don't listen to these people I've spent 15 mother loving years as detailed in this new book, trying to get people to shut the F up and do the right thing. Something else, you know, James and I had many, many conversations over the years about this, about you're going to get sued. There's too much liability, blah, 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 blah. Brothers and sisters, James put it to me this way. I'm going to put it to you this way. There is no greater liability than you purposefully killing a human. End of story. If you're willing to carry a gun and you're willing to look in the mirror and say, yes, I could use this tool to shoot a human. And if that human dies, well, then they die. You're morally okay mentally and morally justified in your brain i'm going to carry this lethal force instrument and if i have to i'll shoot that joker but you won't carry a trauma kit because there's too much liability involved you're a coward and you're intellectually dishonest you're lying to yourself there is no greater liability than purposefully killing a human like no, putting a tourniquet on. There's way more. There's way more liability in putting a tourniquet on a person than actually shooting them. No, there's not. The jurisprudence is there. And I, so, dear Lord, should we or should we not take the advice of the galactically stupid? That's why I said I had to be here today. And, and how 
The book just came out. It's just live. And boom, two idiots go onto YouTube to convince people to not do the right thing. They might spend a lot of time convincing people to do the right thing. And the only clip that we've seen of them is that. Yeah, that's, well, we don't know. That's like, it's like Louis Farrakhan. No, Lu not, Louis, not, not the Louis same. Farrakhan said a lot of really good things. Yeah. Adolf Hitler came yeah, up with kindergarten. Not even close to the same thing. No, it, it, I'm we're, sorry. We're basing the, well, you're I'm basing sorry. your opinion off of the one thing that's a 10 second clip. Or I don't care. Clip I don't care. Of that. And obviously what that thing that they just said is, is, is wrong. This, it's like I, I wrote, how, how long ago did I write the, uh, the, uh, um, that article about uh, the truth about posers. Yeah. The truth about posers. Okay. No, the, I, and the truth the, about the, posers. The reason, the reason I brought this up is mm -hmm. because our, the people on our side spend too much time combating each other. And that's part of the problem. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Um, because I have clearly, to combat. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm not saying that you're doing the wrong thing because you've been teaching people for 15 years and telling people to go save lives. Right. And the, and sometimes there's people that get in the way of that and you have to, like, you have this opinion and you've been doing it for 15 years and you have this I've been teaching, education yeah. that the 15 years is just, even, just, the I know you already gave your background. What I'm saying is you've got this background to do this thing. Then you're supposed to be doing right. But that doesn't mean that the people are delivering the message about this one thing are teaching or I don't remember how you put it, but they're um, teaching people to do the wrong thing all the time. The title of like, the video No, that's like it invalidates it. It's when people or we're not or what did I in my article, in the article, The Truth About Posers, I said, look, what, what I do, what we do is I'm not giving you my opinion about cooking recipes. I'm not t teaching you how to get red wine stains out of a shirt. I'm not teaching you to play tennis or ballroom dance where bad advice, really, if I give you bad advice about cooking and you make a dish that you don't enjoy, it's no one dies. You see, that's the thing with our my world in this world versus the other world where people they're like, well, everyone has an opinion and everyone's opinion is valid. And no, everyone's opinion is not valid. And some opinions are lethally dangerous. Like I said, there was a guy out there when I wrote that article, there was a guy who was thinking about getting training was thinking about carrying medical gear. Then he saw that article by the posers that said, don't do that. It's better off left to the professionals. You shouldn't do that. If you do, you're going to get sued. These are all the reasons you shouldn't. So that guy, he was right there. He was about to do it, but he was talked out of it because this so-called expert with a show, a YouTube channel, whatever, talked him out of doing the right thing and then in the future time goes by that dude is in a rollover car crash his 10 year old daughter has a severed arm because that's what happens in rollover car crashes limbs get severed and you know what that dude does he holds her with his hands as hard as he can and she dies right in front of him because why why didn't he have the training? Why didn't he have the gear? Because a person talked him out of it. And his daughter now, he gets to watch the life float out of her eyes when he was going to. He had the intention to do the right thing. And then a quote unquote, well-intentioned person came along and talked him out of doing it. And now someone is dead who didn't need to be dead except for the dangerous, dangerous opinions of idiots. Should we or should we not take the advice of the galactically stupid? Thank you.
I was successfully able to pull it out. Finally. And that's the show, I guess. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Is he going to come back? He's checking on the fire. Okay. He smells smoke. We're about an hour and 27 minutes. We can wrap up if you want to. Yeah. All no, right, we'll, we'll wait. He just okay. went to check on the fire. We'll wait. We'll wait. Okay. Smoke's moving. Yeah, I can Smoke's smell it. And that's it. Yeah, we're an hour and a half, so we can wrap it. Yeah, we can wrap it up now, if you are ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still there, yeah, if you didn't leave, I want you to have the best information possible. That's my whole life's mission, has been trying to cut through the bull crap and deliver the best information possible. I wrote a book. A book is not training, but a book should inspire you to get good training. That's what we do. All right, Zach. Before we go any further, you need to cut that out. Of course, that's gonna that's gonna be okay. a, that's gonna be a standalone clip. Don't you worry. And tomorrow, I hope that everyone listening to me is a member of the Student of the Gun Grad Program. If you're not, you can be. Go to getsotg.com. Yep. Follow the directions there. Yes. And, uh, and you'll be better off. Uh, jihadi attack in Times Square. Did you see that, Jordan? No. Yep. There was a jihadi attack in Times Square on New Year's Eve. Uh, we're talking about some leadership lessons, uh, fighting fitness. And then on Friday, uh, we're talking about preparing for, quote, the average. If you prepare for the average, you're probably going to be sadly disappointed. Yep. So you want to make sure that you're here for those. Until we're together again, welcome to a brand new year. And remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.